Excellency, guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome you here at Deloitte today on the occasion of this event of the American Chamber of Commerce in Luxembourg and the Luxembourg American Chamber of Commerce, where we will explore the vital subject of free and international trade. We have some excellent speakers with us today, so I won't delve too deeply into the topics that they will cover. However, I will share some thoughts. In today's context, uncertainty has taken center stage. Whilst globalization remains a robust force built on foundations which have been established post World War II, we are witnessing a notable shift. Some are seeking to disengage and to reclaim control over critical elements of the supply chain, particularly in sectors such as healthcare, defense, energy, agriculture, and technology. There are others that are forging alternative alliances, introducing new dynamics and opportunities for global influence. Moreover, conflicts and rising tensions in many parts of the world, including the ascent of regional powers and the competitive landscape in China, prompt questions about the impacts on global economic relations and the outlook for inclusive global growth. Additionally, the upcoming U.S. presidential elections will turn the focal point that will significantly influence the paths we take in the, in the years ahead. In this context, preserving the enduring partnership between Europe and the United States is more critical than ever. Anchored in shared values, mutual cooperation, and a strong partnership which serves as a beacon and a cornerstone of economic stability and progress, we need to continue building on this resilience and the prosperity that stem from our collaborative efforts and shared uh, principles. I'm confident that we've got an excellent lineup today to provide us with valuable insights as to where we stand on this matter and what it means for us here in Luxembourg on, on how we can continue to sow the seeds of shared prosperity. I think I've said enough and I'll leave the words um, to uh, the Amcham Chairman CEO of Paul Schonenberg, who will be welcoming you now. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Badila. Thank you very much for the warm welcome, and thank you very much for the way you have framed the issue that we're here to go ahead and, and discuss today. Um, the uh, trade relationship between Europe and America is the strongest trade relationship that the planet has ever seen. And it has been a driver of prosperity around the world for quite a number of years, growing from strength to strength with the passing of each year. But we don't exactly talk about it very much. I'm not going to say that we take it for granted, because there are a lot of people in business who are aware of it and talk about it. But it's not necessarily on the political agenda. We in Luxembourg have just gotten done with the COVID crisis as has Europe. We have just gotten done having an election to go ahead and produce a new government, which has the appearance of being a little bit more pro-business than the government that we have had for the past 10 years. It looks like this is an exciting time for Luxembourg and an opportunity for us to do a little bit of reinventing and reasserting of ourselves to ensure that we continue in our historic role in Luxembourg as being the best European location for international countries. And a major player in helping to make that happen over the years has been the United States. Um, quite a long time ago, at the end of the 19th century, when people were starving in Luxembourg, America opened its doors and invited Luxembourgers to come. And they came in large numbers, mostly, mostly settling in the upper middle west of, of the United States. And thriving and prospering, to the point now that there are more people of Luxembourg genetic heritage living, working, and striving in the United States than there are in this peaceful, wonderful country in the heart of Europe. We are very proud of that. Um, and I'm sure that uh, our American ambassador, who comes from exactly that region, will say a few words about that, uh, about that as well. But, at the end of the Second World War, um, we also 
uh, continued the friendship that existed between America and Luxembourg with the Marshall Plan for bringing big industrial companies uh, into Luxembourg with subsidy support from the United States. And those companies, by and large, are still here today. They may have shifted a little bit and maybe they're becoming a little bit more research institutions and manufacturing institutions, but they are still here. They are still preferred employers. They are still adding value. They are still making a significant contribution. A few years later on, um, when the EU passed some legislation that allowed for cross-border trading in financial instruments, there were a number of American banks who said, oh, this is a good deal. Where can we do this from? And they, in turn, among other places that they visited, they came to Luxembourg and made a pitch saying that uh, if you guys will enact this legislation properly and quickly, we will come. And Luxembourg did, and they came. And as a result of that early start, Luxembourg is now the second largest financial trading entity and country on the planet, second only after um, New York City. I have to admit that I tend to think of New York City a little bit on occasion as being a bigger version of Luxembourg. You know, you have to remember that um, uh, half the population of Luxembourg is foreigners, half the population of New York is foreigners. Luxembourg has a large multinational presence with a third of the EU bureaucracy. New York has a big multinational presence with the United Nations. Um, Luxembourg, uh, the United States has Central Park. And Luxembourg has an entire country with forests and trees that we all, all thoroughly enjoy. So you can either think of Luxembourg as little New York, or you can think of New York as big Luxembourg. Either one fits. And there are strong ties and strong allegiances between our two countries. We are particularly pleased that among all of you who have come here to listen to this story today, we have 14 people from the Luxembourg American Chamber of Commerce in New York, which is our sister organization, which I also will say with a certain amount of pride, <coughs> is run by the lady who used to be my director of operations here in Luxembourg. So again, there's another link, and it's a good link. We are pleased that they decided to coincide their trip um, to come to visit Luxembourg with this event that we're going ahead and, and doing today. But, you guys didn't come to listen to me talk, even though I rather like talking, as I think some of you know. So what I would like to do is I'd like to now take the occasion with great appreciation to turn the microphone over to an absolutely outstanding American ambassador to say whatever he wants to say to us today. Good afternoon. My name is Tom Barrett, and I am proud to represent President Biden, the State Department, and most importantly, the American people um, in our very, very important relationship uh, with the great country of Luxembourg. Uh, Paul was kind enough to mention that I come from the Midwest. Uh, I come from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with America, you know where it is. For those of you who aren't, it's about 90 miles north of Chicago. In fact, I was the mayor of Milwaukee for almost 18 years before assuming this position. And I often refer to Chicago as one of Milwaukee's finest suburbs um, because we had our close ties and our rivalries as well. Um, and Paul also mentioned that my state was one of those states where we saw um, a large influx of Luxembourg residents in the 1800s. Uh, and I was able to benefit from this a little bit. I remember as a young child, uh, as our family would drive 140 miles up to Door County, Wisconsin to visit my grandmother, um, we would drive through Belgium, Wisconsin. And then maybe 25 or minutes or half hour later, we would drive through Luxembourg, Wisconsin um, to get to Door County. And my father used to always say to my brother and sisters and me, um, you kids are so lucky. We take you to these foreign countries. Uh, and of course, a little four-year-old, five-year-old kid has no idea what his father's talking about. Uh, but obviously, when I became an adult, I thought, oh, now I get it. Uh, to the point when President Biden contacted me and 
asked me to become uh, the ambassador to Luxembourg. This was during the height of COVID and everything was closed down. Um, what I said to my wife was, hey, I got this incredible call. This Saturday, we're going to drive a half hour to the Luxembourg American Museum, <laughs> which is located just north of Milwaukee. Um, again, because of the strong presence uh, of, of Luxembourg heritage in the state of Wisconsin. So again, I'm thankful to the president who, um, before I get into these remarks uh, about our relationship, I, I, I think we all watched with horror um, the events that have unfolded in Israel uh, and the Gaza Strip over the last week and a half. Um, the president has landed just several hours ago um, for a very courageous visit um, to try to um, obviously show our support for Israel, but I think also to make sure that the humanitarian concerns of the Palestinians, um, the civilian the civilians who are, are obviously very, very, um, in a very dangerous situation are addressed as well. So I'm, I'm proud of my president for doing that. Again, it's not an easy trip, but it's a trip that I think underscores our relationship with Israel as well as our concern about humanitarian concerns. So I am honored though to be here today um, to talk about this incredible relationship between the United States and Luxembourg, uh, as well as the rest of the European Union. We will soon hear the results of the 2023 annual transatlantic trade analysis, which I am sure will very clearly illustrate the numbers what I'm about to say. The United States and Europe, as we all know, have been historically, and I believe, will always remain each other's most important economic partner. No two other regions in the world are as deeply integrated as we are. And we should all be proud of that. We are each other's most important trading partners, most important commercial partners, and most important growth markets when it comes to service, trade, and investment. European companies in the United States employ millions of American workers, and similarly, U.S. companies in Europe provide millions of jobs to Europeans. Europe and the United States have intertwined economies, and our role in each other's prosperity is unparalleled. Throughout history, we have continued to build on our already strong relationship by finding new ways to cooperate. It is momentous that in just two days, when the President but returns to the United States from Israel. President Biden is welcoming European Council President uh, Charles Michel and European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen at the White House for the second US-EU summit since President Biden took office. This is a priority for our president. To provide an effective platform of cooperation, we established a high-level US-EU Trade and Technology Council in 2021 that has helped grow our bilateral trade and investment relationship, it has helped to strengthen our cooperation on a number of issues uh, which are very important to both Europe and the United States. Luxembourg, Luxembourg's role in our economy, in our economic relationship with Europe is significant. Um, and as I talk to my friends at home, they are always surprised at what a powerhouse Luxembourg is economically. But bilateral trade and investment between, between the United States and Luxembourg continue to be one of the cornerstones of our partnership. And we have continued to build on this unwavering foundation throughout the years. Many of you in this room may already know, but for those of you joining us from the United States, Luxembourg and the United States have shared a friendship establishment and, nav and navigation treaty since 1963. It assures national treatment and other investor protections. In 2019, Luxembourg and the United States ratified the protocol of our bilateral tax treaty, bringing it in accord, in accord with OECD standards for information exchange and improving transparency in the banking sector, ensuring better and simpler cooperation between our respective tax authorities. I want to applaud Luxembourg for this year implementing its own national foreign direct investment screening mechanism which is key to safeguarding our common security and interests. Not only is the implementation of the investment screening a significant uh, a safeguard of critical infrastructure and national security, it helps maintain transparent and rules-based open economic worldwide. U.S. companies are among the most prominent foreign investors in Luxembourg. Amazon, Microsoft, 
PayPal, PayPal, and others, other companies have chosen to base their operations right here in Luxembourg. Luxembourg's industrial sector is strongly tied to the U.S., with American companies such as Goodyear, DuPont, Amazon, and others being among the largest private sector employers in the country. But let's look at the numbers. In 2022, U.S. exports of goods and service to, the, like, to Luxembourg were $11.7 billion, up 8.2% from 2021. And imports from Luxembourg were $3.2 billion, up 3.3% from 2021. As a result, the trade surplus with Luxembourg increased to $8.5 billion. The figures for investment are equally impressive. Together, our countries continue to explore new innovative areas of cooperation, particularly in space and sustainable finance, where Luxembourg is a global leader. I have to say, as a side note, uh, when I learned about my opportunity to serve the president of the country in this role, I did not know the role that Luxembourg played in space. Um, and one of the phrases that I've heard that I really um, uh, am appreciate is, Luxembourg has a small footprint on Earth, but a large footprint in space. Um, and I think that that's definitely true. We know that because Luxembourg is home to SES, the, the largest satellite service operator company in the world. Uh, clearly, it's a global leader with a leading role deploying 5G in the United States and as a technology supplier to the U.S. Department of Defense. Luxembourg has its own green exchange stock market to provide to promote, to promote securities reflecting um, sound investments in ecology. It's noteworthy that the Luxembourg Green Exchange is the largest ESG and green bond market in the world. The United States recognizes the tremendous potential of our bilateral economic relationship as we pursue new heights in our cooperation and through our cooperation with the European Union. That's exactly why we see so many U.S. trade delegations visit Luxembourg. In just the last two months, we have welcomed Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers and representatives from the state of Delaware to Luxembourg. And of course, I'm honored to welcome the Luxembourg American Chamber of Commerce delegation in town this week. As we seize opportunities together, we also ta tackle challenges together, global challenges that reach far beyond the economic realm. We live in a time of significant global economic and geopolitical disruption and volatility. But together, the United States and Europe, including Luxembourg, have risen to the challenge, and we must continue to work together. Our response to the challenges of our time is founded on our common values. Together, we laid the foundation of the world economy and the rules-based international order after World War II based on openness, fair competition, transparency, and accountability. Today, the United States and Europe continue to be an anchor for democracy, peace and security around the world. We know there are challenges, but we will face them together. We do not compromise our values for financial gain and are proud to uphold the rule of law and promote human rights for all. But again, we know that right now, we are not living in a theoretical situation. We are living in a situation that is fraught with peril. Our joint response to Russia's brutal full-scale invasion of Ukraine has been unprecedented. Together, we have provided unparalleled support to Ukraine and imposed firm sanctions in response to Russia's illegal war against Ukraine. I am particularly grateful to the government of Luxembourg for its tremendous efforts in freezing Russian assets. In fact, nearly one-third of all Russian assets frozen in the EU have been frozen by Luxembourg authorities. We cannot and will not overlook that Russia's full-scale invasion of, of Ukraine has taught us some very hard lessons about the risks of doing business with authoritarian systems to all who believe in democracy and freedom. Authoritarian leaders and regimes do not adhere to these values. The European Union's approach to relations with China focuses on de-risking. The United States strategy of invest, align, and compete is similar in many ways. On this point, Europe and the United States agree we must be clear-eyed about the opportunities and the risks of doing business with the PRC. I want to emphasize that the United States doesn't expect every country to have the exact same assessment of China as we do. 
We don't seek to block any country from growing its economy or advancing the interests of its people. There are many areas where working together with China is paramount, and we recognize that. We do that as well in the United States, and we will continue to do that. But we do caution our partner governments that procurements related to critical infrastructure, be it 5G communication systems, security surveillance systems, or scanning equipment at border, camp, at border crossings warrant an extra layer of protection when working with governments that do not follow democratic systems of rule of law. We all have a responsibility to protect the core value our country stands for, not only because it's the right thing to do, but also because it ensures sustainable economic growth. For example, for trade to be sustainable, it must include sustainable labor practices that ensure workers as well as employers benefit from trade. This means including effective measures to prohibit goods made from forced labor and the elimination of forced labor domestically. In 2021, President Biden signed the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act into law. This law prohibits imports made by forced labor in Xinjiang into the United States. It underscores our commitment to combating forced labor everywhere where genocide and crimes against humanity are occurring. Sustainable trade must also contribute to environmental protection and make a significant contribution to tackling the, the climate crisis. As trading partners, we must strive for high levels of environmental protection and effectively enforce our environmental laws. We must recognize that tackling global challenges requires investment from government as well as from companies. But we also know that where investment flows, trade follows. The United States remains committed to growing the U.S. trade and investment relationship with Luxembourg and any other European partners in a way that both tackles today's challenges and seizes tomorrow's opportunities. I want to thank the Chamber, the American Chamber of Commerce Luxembourg, for inviting me here today, uh, and I look forward to the fruitful discussion ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We all know that um, in Luxembourg, we have a de dedicated um, Ministry of Economy. That we have, we have, actually, truth be told, there are two really important ministries to Amcham. One is the Ministry of Finance, um, because we're very concerned about taxation policy and things like that. And the other is the Ministry of Economy, because the Ministry of Economy deals with helping and supporting companies to go ahead and come, work, survive here in Luxembourg. We are very pleased today to have the Chief of Staff from the Ministry of Economy uh, here with us. Um, Luke Decker and I have known each other for, I think, at least 15 years now. And um, I knew him before he went off to China to go ahead and lead the, uh, the council in Shanghai. And I was very pleased to see him um, after he came back. He hadn't changed too much in the process of doing that. He was still the same wonderful guy that I knew when he left. And I'm pleased to see his progress in the government since uh, he's back. If you don't know him, when we go out for the coffee break later, you should. He's one of the Luxembourgers that, uh, Luxembourg political people that uh, you should pay attention to because I think he has a very strong future ahead of him. And with that, thank you for coming, and please come and join, take the microphone. Thank you, Paul, for the very nice and kind introduction. And uh, thank you, Ambassador Barrett. It's uh, always a pleasure to listen to the fine speaker that you are. And actually, you've said so much about the relationship between Luxembourg and the U.S. that I don't need to take my speech out. I don't know what to, what to add to what you said. And for those in the room who think that I'm going to announce now who will be the new Minister of the Economy and who will be the new Minister of Finance, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I don't know yet. But the only thing that I can assure you is that Luxembourg 
has always and will always be a very stable country and with our political system you have always had in one government at least one party that was in the former government this will be the case again so there is always a continuity it's a bit different than the US, uh, the, the US system there so it's not, it's not a hard fight uh, until, until one is out and the other one comes in and tries to undo everything that has been done before. So I can assure you that the great relationship between the US and Luxembourg, I would actually say the transatlantic relationship will stay very high on the agenda. So as so much has been said, I will, I will actually tell you a little story. Uh, Paul alluded that I was uh, Consul General in, uh, in Shanghai uh, until uh, 2020 when I came back. And there was one day, there was this young lady coming to the consulate. She was American, but she came to pick up her Luxembourgish passport. And as the Luxembourgish community in, in, in uh, Shanghai was around 45 people, an addition of one was actually quite an event. So I invited her into my office and I asked her about her story. How come that this lady came to get a passport? It was that she was very excited because she didn't have a Luxembourgish passport before that. And she told me, I've never been to Luxembourg. But how come that you have now an, uh, a Luxembourgish passport? And so she told me the story about, I hope I get it right because it was a few years ago when she told me the story, but it was her grand-grandmother who died just a few, a few years before, and she was always talking about Luxembourg and their Luxembourgish ancestors. And when she died, the, the cousin of this, uh, of this lady said, oh, I, I need to check it out because I'm not sure if she was just telling us stories and making them up or if there is actually a link between our family and Luxembourg. So, first of all, first challenge, you have to find Luxembourg on the map. Then he came to Luxembourg. He found the little village where they were from and he was stunned. He was standing in front of that church. He was like, that is the exact same church that we have in our little town in the US where I'm from. And so he dug into it and that was actually where his family was from and uh, in the town they had rebuilt the, uh, the, the, the uh, a church that they had in Luxembourg. And this young lady told me, eh, I've never been to Luxembourg, but I have plans because now my sister lives in Luxembourg and actually she works at Deloitte. <laughs> and uh, so that's how the, the bonds between our two countries have repercussions half around the world and uh, we find them where we wouldn't, accept, uh, uh, where we wouldn't uh, expect them. And it shows that these bonds are very deep. I think this is very important in today's world where uncertainty is, uh, is certainly one of the major features of our world. And it's important to know who are our reliable partners. It's important to know who we can turn to. And yes, I mean, if you, if you look at the economy and our economic ties, if you look at uh, Amazon being the second largest employer in Luxembourg, at uh, Goodyear, who came just after World War II to Luxembourg and uh, continues investing. I, uh, I, I was at the inauguration uh, last year in May with the Grand Duke and uh, Minister, Minister Fayot of their new plant in Dudelange. Uh, if you, if you uh, look at DuPont, they are uh, uh, starting up their, their additional 
smaller companies to Walker in the U.S. and 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 Lighten, which was just uh, just announced uh, two weeks ago. Uh, Lighten, they they do 3D graphite, uh, which is uh, which is very interesting. Uh, for example, for uh, uh, for building batteries, which is uh, part of our future. And they uh, they have uh, they have signed an MOU that they are going to, to set up uh, research and development in a small plant in Luxembourg. And there too, I'm going back to these stories because how did they how did they end up in Luxembourg? Actually, Gaston Strong, our former ambassador to the U.S., was also looking at his family. His and, and he he looked like oh I I still have some far away cousins somewhere who emigrated in the 19th century. And so he came upon the, uh, one of the largest investors into Leighton. And that's how Leighton ended up by looking at Luxembourg and discussing this and, and now setting up here. So the bonds between Luxembourg and the US are not just about the economy. Actually, the economy and the, the, the trade between uh, the, the trade and the investment between our countries are just what uh, are just what is built on the foundation of our friendship, and I think that is what makes our relationship so special. So, with that, I would just like to say that if there are U.S. companies interested in doing business in Europe, if there are Luxembourgish companies interested in doing business in the U.S., just come to us as the Ministry of the Economy. We are a facilitator. Uh, we have, uh, or to the Luxembourg government, I should say, because we have uh, trade and investment offices in New York and San Francisco. Uh, which are also consulates, uh, consulates general. Uh, we have an embassy obviously in Washington. We will open an embassy in Ottawa next year. So there will be uh, <laughs> so there there will be uh, even more uh, going on between uh, between both sides of the Atlantic in the future. Uh, of course, we are very pleased to partner with Amcham, to partner with LACC to support uh, associations like this, like, like this. and uh, we are there for you. So, thank you very much, and uh, sorry for not holding my speech, which was already, everything was covered by, uh, by uh, the ambassador, so, thank you very much. You know, we live in a world that um, in many, many ways is more and more transactional. But if you've listened to what people have said today, we're not talking about transactional relationships. We're talking about ties of friendship, ties of love, but also, of course, ties that go ahead and build stronger prosperity. But I think it's really important to say that this transatlantic relationship, which I cannot say too strongly, is the most powerful trading relationship the world has ever seen, is not just a transactional relationship. It's a relationship based on trust and friendship, and you have heard that um, from, uh, from the ambassador, um, from the representative of the Ministry of Economy, and you will continue to hear that now, because now we're going to get into um, the guts of this study. So the little bit of a background uh, from my point of view is that um, the Federation of American Chambers, every European country has an American Chamber of Commerce. Every single one, with one exception. And one exception is Belgium. Belgium has two American Chambers of Commerce. One Chamber of Commerce accredited to the country, and one accredited to the European Commission to make sure that the European Commission does the right things. 
and to tell us when they're not doing the right things so that we can go to the government and say, hey, you need to watch out for so-and-so. We are, um, and Amcam Luxembourg, we're very proud to be associated with the Federation of American Chambers of Commerce. There are, the Federation of American Chambers represents 17,000 companies. That's a pretty healthy figure of people who are promoting prosperity around, uh, around Europe. 17,000. And as I said, we do this, um, we all get, you know, we work together as partners. Most of us concentrate on home because we learned a long time ago that politics is always local and we should concentrate on our home countries. That's certainly what Anne Chandler Nelson does. But we also partner and cooperate together with the other uh, chambers of commerce. Two weeks ago, I had an absolutely outstanding excuse to go to Greece for a week to go ahead and join my colleagues from AmCham EU to go ahead and celebrate an AmCham EU anniversary and to do a best practices seminar. It was unbelievably good at multiple levels, but that's skipping us outside our target. Our target today is we are very honored that we have uh, Thibault Lorty, who is here from, um, who holds a senior position and is responsible for this study that we are uh, presenting uh, now, um, which has been, which is being done every single year um, to track the transatlantic trade investment relationship and report uh, on the details of it. And I have to say that the study is funded by five of the AmCham's in Europe, and one of the five happens to be AmCham Luxembourg. Yeah, it's true, we're a little bit small, but I think we punch a little bit above our weight, and for Luxembourg, which for whom trade is important, this is a project that we thought was important for us to be involved in. And I asked them, since we're helping you by paying part of the bill for the study, do you mind coming to Luxembourg, where we have a third of the EU bureaucracy and we have a lot of business people and so forth and so on, and present the study results? They did that last year, and they did it here at Deloitte. It was successful. And now we have invited them back again uh, the second time. So, Timo, the microphone is yours. Thank you, thank you very much. Paul, you've raised expectations now that the second year presentation got. Um, it's a pleasure to be uh, with all of you today in uh, Luxembourg. Let me just try to get this to work. Just one, one word about MCMEU, indeed we represent American companies committed to and invested in Europe based in Brussels. Two big priorities, which I think are important to mention because they will say a lot about what they will say afterwards. We stand for a stronger and more united EU. The single market is the biggest driver of foreign direct investments into Europe. American companies are the biggest cheerleader of that single market and so that's certainly at the core of what we stand for. And then secondly, to maintain and strengthen the transatlantic relationship, which to your point, the speakers have, have mentioned that before, is about a strong economic and political relationship, but also underpinned by a lot of values, and we see in today's world uh, what that means. Well, part of this amazing network indeed, and we're really grateful for our partnership with Anshan Luxembourg, which plays a critical role certainly in uh, the EU27 group of Anshans in Europe in terms of making sure we have a conducive environment for a business in the uh, EU. It's a fantastic network, and I really encourage all of the companies to reach out to all of the colleagues in the other countries as well as you tackle issues because it's a fantastic support that you can get from a lot of those ancients. So today I'm going to try to briefly unpack four questions about the transatlantic relationship. Uh, I'm going to get the first one, are transatlantic relations in troubled waters? It's something sometimes are here, so we'll get into that. Spoiler, no, we're not in troubled waters. Second, what do you need to know about the transatlantic economy report? It's 200 pages, so I'll try to get to the core of what matters to you and what can be useful as well in your work. Why does it matter for Luxembourg? So what? You know, it's a great relationship, what does it mean for us? And then finally, what are some of the top issues we are watching uh, as representatives of companies that you should also be watching as well as we think about the transatlantic uh, relationship? So are we in, in troubled waters? We're in a relationship that's often characterized by some of the kind of political dynamics that are at play. We live in a very uncertain world that has been mentioned. But often we're looking at, you know, some of the disagreements, and that takes a lot of airspace. 
So we might be thinking about, oh, the US has done this, and this might attract investment there, oh, Europeans are doing this, and this isn't great. And that does tend to take a lot of the space in our relationship. We tend to focus a lot on uh, where our disagreements can be, and sometimes we can lose sight of the bigger picture. And so if we're looking at the water there, basically, we tend to focus at the surface. And indeed the surface is important because if you're in the boat and there's a big storm, you kind of want it to be, you know, maybe a bit calmer. But there is something more important that, ha that happens underneath the water, and that's our economic relationship, that's the strongest carrot. And that sometimes people tend to forget as we, you know, in, in the previous, year, previous years we're watching tweets, for example, or we're looking at some of that, which can be a lot of noise, we're losing sight of what's kind of the under the under, uh, undercurrent that is strong. And so really trying to think our relationship, both in terms of political terms, which I have to say at the moment are really strong, and the ambassador alluded to that, and certainly a strong commitment from President Biden to the transatlantic relationship, but also an economic relationship that is equally important. And you know, you've mentioned 60 years of representation of Anshams across Europe, but I mean, some of those companies have been here for 100 years of, of more, some of those you mentioned as well, talking about their investments in Luxembourg. And so what does that economic relationship look like? Let's take a look. <laughs> of the Transatlantic Economy Report 2023. The report is authored by Joe Quinlan Dan Hamilton at Johns Hopkins University in the US. We've just celebrated 20 years of that research. It really kind of goes uh, some, some years ago looking back at how that relationship has really strengthened thinking about the role as well of the transatlantic economy in a globalized, uh, globalized world. Um, and so what I will do today is quickly walk you through five of the top findings that I mentioned. We've got 200 pages of analysis, uh, so it's going to take a bit of time if I go through all of that. So I thought I would just focus on five things that I think are relevant for the conversation and I'm happy to dive into some of those findings uh, more. We're going to be talking about the role of trade and investment, but energy, digital, strategic dependencies, which the ambassador also alluded to, and finally our relationship with uh, China. Finally, what, firstly, one of the, the things that is important is we do tend to focus a lot about trade numbers. Certainly, that's something that takes a lot of airtime in media as well. We're looking at basically uh, how much trade is going back and forth on both sides of the Atlantic, and the numbers are really important if you look at both goods and services. What is important though is that investment is actually the biggest driver of the relationship. If you look at the way a lot of American companies are set up, here in Luxembourg, but all over Europe, through affiliates, you get a different picture because actually it's through those operations that those companies operate, uh, grow, do business, and contribute to uh, the societies in which they are. And so it's interesting there because if you look at Transatlantic, which is the first column here, you see basically foreign affiliate sales. So that's basically what those companies are selling. You see how that compares to trade, transatlantic trade here. Asia Pacific is in the middle. And so if you look at trade, indeed it's important, US Europe trade, but it doesn't tell the full picture, and it's important to be looking at those numbers as well because of the way American companies are set up here and contribute. Um, 
That being said, investment as well as important total stock of US FDI in Europe is four times more US investment in Asia Pacific. EU FDI stock in the US is ten times more than EU investment in China. So really you get a sense of the size of that relationship if you kind of go a bit beyond some of the headlines and look also at the importance of investment. Energy has been a key feature of our relationship over the last uh, certainly year or two. Uh, the invasion of uh, Ukraine by, by Russia has certainly brought home some of the challenges around dependencies in Europe when it comes to energy. The US has really played a critical role when it comes to that. What we're seeing here is energy exports from the US to Europe. And if you look at the first two bars, you really see how that has grown in just one year and the critical role that the US has played in terms of helping Europe with basically the winter, with making sure that Europe could quickly disconnect to some extent from its dependency on Russian gas. And so that has been a critical shift if we look at the last few years in terms of the picture uh, of this relationship. But that's not the only thing. What we're seeing as well is a greater probably degree of alignment in terms of policy priorities in the uh, green area. We see the Inflation Reduction Act in the US. We see the Green Deal Industrial Plan in Europe. That is a key uh, um, element to look at because it's also a big business opportunity for a lot of companies that are keen to invest in clean technology where we see alignment that can still grow between both uh, sides of the ocean. Digital, um, I'll quickly go over that. It's important, it's something that has been reported year after year in the study is the size of the digital economy as an enabler. If you're looking at transatlantic data flows, they account for more than half uh, from the US, they account for more than half of Europe's data flows and, and half of US data flows globally. Over 90% of EU-based firms actually transfer data to and from the US. It matters why, because up until recently, the agreement actually enables those uh, um, transfers was in question. Thanks to leadership from uh, the US government and the European Commission, we've seen a new agreement called a privacy framework between the EU and the US that is being finalized, which was critical for a lot of our companies and a lot of European companies as well that are doing business uh, across the Atlantic. Transatlantic cable connections as well, very deep. And then interesting also is to look at some of the digital services and the digitally enabled services where you also see that on both sides we're hitting record high numbers. We can get into some of those for those who are interested. Number four, strategic dependencies. Uh, certainly a topic that has risen to the top of the political agenda. COVID-19 played a key role for me in some of the kind of recognition of the issue uh, that American and European companies are facing around the world when it comes to dependency on uh, critical raw minerals, but also other uh, supplies that are required in strategic sectors. You see on the slide just a few examples of those. They've been, you know, on top of the political agenda on both sides of the Atlantic. We've seen legislation on chips in the US, in the EU. Uh, we've seen conversation on critical materials. I'll get, I'll get to that as well. What is, what is clear though? I uh, need to leave to go over to the uh, uh, Luxembourg Stock Exchange for a, a tour with them, with them this afternoon. So um, that's that's important as, as part of their. Their visit, so I think now is the time to go ahead and draw this a little bit um, to a close. We had talked about going ahead and doing some question and answer, but we frankly think that that's a little bit better to go ahead and do during um, the, the networking, which um, um, Deloitte is kindly um, also helping us and giving us uh, some support. By the way, I neglected to mention when, when we did this, we are delighted to have Deloitte as a substantial child member of Amgen for many years. They are very kind and very supportive to us. We very much appreciate it. And in addition to helping us with wonderful things like this, I also happen to say that they also host the most important committee we have, which is our tax committee. And um, so um, you don't necessarily hear a lot about that. Um, I don't want to say that they do their business in the dark of the night. Um, <laughs> But they do what they do discreetly um, and extraordinarily well. So, um, uh, so you have my thanks, you and your team, for going ahead and, uh, and, and doing that. And, uh, and again, I'm very pleased that, uh, uh, that Deloitte allows us um, 
sufficient support so that we can have our vital, essential, and very strong uh, uh, tax committee. So, I would just ask you if you will join me one more round of applause for everybody who has spoken so well. And please join us, uh, please join us outside uh, to the extent that you can still stay. And, uh, and thank you so much for coming. Pass the word on this on to your colleagues and friends. Um, this has been a really, a real Luxembourg American success story. And we, uh, we appreciate it as well. We don't talk about it all the time. We're a little bit quiet. But if you would, through your networks, um, talk about it a little bit, that would be kind. Thank you very much.